Hi, it's Mike here again, bringing you another review in collaboration with Factory Direct Hobbies. Well, this week we're looking at Tamir's 1 in 30 second scale F4J Phantom. It's a slightly older kit from the Tamir range, dating from 1997, um, but how has it stood the test of time? Well, an immediate spoiler, fantastically well. Really, really good. Sometimes with an older kit, the, uh, the molds can deteriorate a little bit, so you get quite a bit of flash coming out where the plastic squeezes out of the edges of the mold. None of that with this one at all. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really crisp. As crisp as when I was making them back in the day when it first came out. This obviously isn't the first one of these that I've made. But it's really, really stood up well. The, the molding is fantastic. The engineering in it is superb. The fit is sensational. Everything that you would expect of a Tamir model. Um, thoroughly enjoyable build, really, really fun all the way through. Logical construction, seams in the right kind of places where you can easily hide them. And that's true of a lot of Phantoms. I, th I think a lot of the manufacturers have kind of taken Tamir's lead with the top and bottom fuselage with the seam going around the bottom. Really great way of doing it. Really subtle. The seam is kind of along the line between the, uh, the, the white, the insignia white underside and the light gold gray oversides. So that just works superbly well. Um, it's a large model, obviously. It's a 1 in 30 second scale Phantom. It's a big aircraft. Um, but Tamir have really taken that into account that it could be a little bit weak in some areas. So it has a significant number of screws in it. Screws to hold the top and the bottom fuselage together. Metal landing gear, so you know that it's not going to break. You know that it's going to stand the test of time. With the wheels themselves screwed onto that metal landing gear, Really, really nice. The landing gear itself then screws into the uh, into the actual plastic of the model. Again, super solid. Yeah, the the, the landing gear is going nowhere on this. This is going to definitely stand the test of time. So that's, that's awesome. Nice selection of weapons. Uh, it, it's just an air air to air configuration that it comes with, but it's got sidewinders and Sparrow missiles. They're pretty well detailed. Um, clear parts. Fantastic. I mean, to me, clear parts are just excellent. So that's, you know, it, it, it's taken as read that they're going to be good. So no, no complaints there. So where would I say that this model was let down a little bit? Well, there's a, there's a couple of areas, really. Um, and, they're, and they're kind of niggles, I guess, rather than anything more than that. Um, the detail in the cockpit perhaps isn't what you'd expect at 1 in 30 second scale these days. It, it's good. It is good. But it just isn't quite, you know, at the level of perhaps some of the more modern 1 in 30 second scale kits. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that with this one, the detail level is probably just on a par with their 1 in 48 scale version. The 1 in 48 scale version is really just a scaled down version of this kit. The assembly method is exactly the same, just doesn't have the screws and that sort of thing. So if space is at a premium and you really want to make one of these, uh, you could consider that 1 in 48 scale. It's the same build. It's, it, you just don't end up with quite such a big aircraft at the end. Um, another slight niggle that I had with this kit, the decals ultimately went on beautifully, but they were very, very thin and a bit fragile. I don't know if they were a bit old, the ones that, that, that came in this kit, um, but some of, some of them broke on me. Not the significant ones, not like the big markings on the tail uh, and, and things like that, but some of the long straight ones where you're you marking out lines on things, they, they, they had a tendency to break up on me. And they also were, they were a little bit hard to get off the backing paper. So if you make this, the big piece of advice I'd give to you with the decal section is give them a good soak, go away and leave them for you know three or four minutes. It really does take that long. But once you've done that, they'll have come completely free of the, uh, of the backing paper. And then you'll be able to avoid that tearing issue that I encountered. I'm just impatient with these things, so I, I didn't leave them to sit for long enough. Lesson learned, I made a few mistakes at the very start of the decaling on this one and then realized that I was going to have to slow it down a little bit and take a step back. But um, once they're on there, fantastic. Uh, the decals in this kit are by Cartograph, and Cartograph obviously have a fantastic name uh, in decals. Um, and they went down beautifully. They just, with some microsol on them, they just disappeared down into the surface, even in some of the more tricky, challenging areas, such as around where the US Air Force round or US Navy roundels um, uh, are there on the wings. There's some difficult shapes and compound curves in that area, but, uh, but they, went, they went down beautifully. Really, really nice. They look painted on, so I, you can't ask for any more than that with decals. So 
I would I give this kit a really, really solid rating. I, I love it. I love it. This is the fourth one of these that I've made. Um, and I've made a bunch of the one in, one in 48 scale ones as well. So if that's any kind of measure for how much I like building this kit, then uh, you know I, I can't speak highly enough of it. I really like it. So if you have the space for it and you have the inclination to do it, pick up one of these. You really won't regret it. Uh, and at a great price as well from Factory Direct Hobbies. Anyway, thank you for spending the time to listen to me today. Uh, very much appreciate your support. And I hope you have a great weekend.